Hi. Good morning, Mr. Evans. Welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Uh, could you please uh, tell me about your job at the Cincinnati Opera? My job at Cincinnati Opera is called Artistic Director. What that means is that I choose all of the singers who sing in the operas, all the conductors who conduct the great Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, and the directors who also direct the action on stage. I work with my colleagues to choose the operas that we actually present, the actual titles. But uh, artistic director means just that. I'm in charge of all of the artistic activity of the company. Why is the Cincinnati Opera presenting a Spanish theme opera season? Well, I have loved Spanish music and culture since I was a young boy growing up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I'll tell you how it started. Many, many years ago, there was a very great Spanish soprano by the name of Victoria de los Angeles. And she toured around the United States for many, many years giving recitals. She also was a great opera singer, but I only saw her give a recital. And she sang a very, very classical recital and then at the end of the evening, when the audience was going absolutely crazy, she came out, not with her pianist, but with a guitar, and played and sang clavelitos. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with Spanish culture just from that one performance. I must have been about 14 years old. So I made a point from then on to be more familiar with Spanish classical music, Spanish folk music, and finally, it took me until I was in my late 20s, early 30s, to visit Spain, but I finally visited Spain. Why we chose a Spanish season is for a couple of reasons. For one, there is a, a growing Spanish-speaking population in this part of the country, particularly in the Tri-States area, and particularly in the greater Cincinnati area. And I've always been aware of the richness and depth of Spanish musical culture, and I've also been aware of a curious problem, mm -hmm. that because Spain particularly in the 19th century, in the 1800s, was a country that was very isolated culturally in many ways from the rest of the Europe in music. It never developed a tradition of composers writing grand opera. Mm -hmm. There is a great, of course, Spanish lighter music tradition called Zarzuela. But there's no grand opera by Spanish composers. So I thought, well, we have, to, we have to remedy this somehow by extolling the fact that we have so many more Spanish-speaking people in our region. So I thought, let's do an opera season that celebrates Spain. So we picked four operas, three of which are by non-Spanish composers, and one of which is by one Spanish-speaking composer, although he's from Argentina, so he's technically South American. But he speaks Spanish, grew up speaking Spanish. His name is Osvaldo Golihoff and it is his opera that is actually in Spanish this summer. But the other thing that is amazing to me is not only do I respect Spanish culture, but of course some of the greatest composers who ever lived love Spanish culture. Mozart, probably one of the greatest composers who ever lived, wrote two operas about Spain. One, The Marriage of Figaro, Le Nozzi di Figaro, which we're going to be doing this summer. And of course the other is Don Juan, Don Giovanni. Verdi wrote more than four operas on Spanish subjects, one of which we're going to be doing this summer, Don Carlo, which of course is about the incredible, uh, difficult relationship that King Philip II of Spain, Filippo II in, in Italian, and his son Don Carlos had. The third opera, Aina da Mar, is actually a real, true story, and it is the story of the murder of the great Spanish poet, Federico Garcia Lorca, at the hands of the phalangists in the 1930s during the great Spanish and terrible Spanish Revolution. And finally, the last opera, the most famous opera ever written, the most beloved opera ever put on the stage, and guess what? It's about a Spanish subject, and of course you don't need a university education to figure that one out. That's Carmen. Why does Cincinnati Opera wish to reach out to the Hispanic community? I think it's incredibly important to recognize that the world is changing. And the United States has always been a country that has welcomed new cultures into the mainstream eventually. Mm -hmm. There's always a time of introduction, a time of transition, also a time of resistance. We have to remember that every single culture that has come to the United States, from the pilgrims themselves in 1620 all the way to today, has experienced frustration and struggle, and eventually, touch wood, they come into the mainstream. It happened with my people, the Greeks. 
my grandparents came here, my grandfather sold vegetables from a cart on the streets of Boston. And here I am two generations later running a major opera company. For me, the immigrant experience and the story of how someone can come to a new country not speaking the language, not knowing the culture, but just hoping that it's a better place to live, a place to raise the family they want to create, the legacy they want to leave, and also a place that will honor their culture. One of the things that I am so proud of as a Greek is that my native culture, my ancestral culture, is completely assimilated into the United States now. Now, it's taken more than 100 years, but that's okay. Things take time. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, my American friends love Greek food. They love Greek history and culture. And since the Spanish-speaking world is, a, in some ways, a more recent arrival in modern times to much of the northern part of America, we thought it's time. It really is time. It's past time. Maybe we should have done this a long time ago, but now is a good time to recognize that the Spanish-speaking world has is risen like a thermometer throughout the United States. Every year you see, if you look at these statistics, the number of people who speak Spanish in a region as their first language rises every decade to come closer and closer and closer to being a very important part of culture. So why not now? Uh, it's a perfect time for us to celebrate the fact that the local Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is very strong, that the Spanish-speaking populations from all over the Spanish-speaking world are in great numbers here in the region, and so it's time to celebrate. Well, so you're celebrating a culture that probably people doesn't know about. It. It's well, like a great awareness that we are here, but the culture is beautiful. Well, this is something that particularly is proud for me because I think, you know, some, some people say, well, why didn't you present all Spanish operas? Sometimes it's important to find a balance because it's a little bit like, um, you probably have experienced this in your own life. You have a great idea, and you think it's a great idea, and nobody believes you until someone else tells them it's a great idea. And then they said, oh, of course, it's such a fantastic idea. Well, I had the idea first. It's the same thing about using composers from other cultures. If Verdi, the greatest Italian opera composer who ever lived, loved Spain and its culture, why should we? If Mozart, probably the most beautiful composer of music who ever lived, loved Spain enough to write two of his most mature and beautiful operas about Spanish culture, we should too. If Bizet, who actually visited Spain a lot in his, as a young man, you know, he didn't live very long, unfortunately. He died in his, in his 30s. But if Bizet chose to present the totality of his genius in the one opera by him that is really internationally famous and its Spanish culture, we should all recognize Spanish culture has a lot to offer. If it's inspired great artists across the centuries to look into its history, to look into its traditions, to look into its drama, then we should too. Oh, I, perfect. I'm, I'm so thrilled. Thank you. What so additional we? Hispanic programming and partnerships that Cincinnati Opera have planned this year? Well, we've already done quite a bit. Um, by the time this video reaches your, your audience, uh, in the middle of the winter, we uh, had a wonderful partnership with the Centro de Amistad based in Erlanger, Kentucky, where we actually worked with a group of young students and they created a composition with a composer. So we have worked in that capacity. Coming up, we also have wonderful collaborations with the Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra, which will present Don Giovanni, the other great Mozart opera on a Spanish theme, just a week after we do The Marriage of Figaro. The local Cincinnati Shakespeare Company is going to present a staged reading of Fuente de Ovejuna, which is the great Lope de Vega play about resistance to political tyranny. Lope de Vega, of course, the great Spanish contemporary of Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many things that will be happening during this summer. And as a matter of fact, if you want to know more and you're online, we have a special section of our website, the Cincinnati Opera website, devoted to all of these activities. And they're all listed there very, very clearly. It's, so I would recommend that if you've never been to the opera before, Come visit with us at Cincinnati Opera this summer and introduce yourself to this incredible world of passion through Spanish culture and the greatest opera ever written. It's an honor and a privilege to have talked to you today and I hope that people can join and be part of the opera this season. I really appreciate it. I hope I can see you next week, year two. Absolutely. And I hope that you can have another Spanish opera next year. Well, stay tuned. There will be spanish theme opera from time to time as part of our life, in part because there's so much of it. Thank, Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.